What is going on guys? Wiser here and I'm coming to you with One Hive Labs next. Slate my base. So I'm here with my good friend Kadik. How you doing man, my man? Hey man, doing good. Glad to be back. Just wanted to mention it's Kadik's birthday tomorrow. So let's uh, I'll give him some uh, happy birthday shout outs in the comments here everyone. Uh, the big 2-6 he's turning. Um, anyhow, so we wanted to get this done so he can go ahead and enjoy his weekend, enjoy his birthday. Uh, uh, you know, it's a couple things we wanted to touch on huge news in the Clash of Clans world with this uh, pending update that we're about to get. Um, you know, it may actually change the way we do these Slay My Base uh, videos. Uh, we had a few ideas. Uh, what do you think about it, Katak? I think it's going to be amazing. The the possibilities of uh, this new update with, uh, well, basically we can copy our base and uh, we can actually hit it ourselves. I mean, how awesome would that be? We'll still We'll still need to figure out how to do it. But uh, the possibility is there, and I'm, I'm hyped, hyped. I really am. It'd yeah. be amazing. It'd be really cool if we can somehow uh, incorporate uh, us showing us maybe attacking or practicing on some of your bases that you guys submit us. So we're gonna we're gonna put our heads together. We obviously need to see it drop and see exactly how it works um, from what we can tell is there's a 24 hour cooldown time from the time you hit save on your built base to the time you can use that base to issue a friendly challenge with someone so we might have to play with it a little bit um but it sounds sounds awesome i'm really excited for this update for the first time i think ever in my clash of clans uh career so <laughs> I'm really excited myself. It's going to be really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So let's just dive right into this then and uh, yep, continue on flipping over base number one here. Uh, just going to kind of quickly throw it, roll through this one. Uh, you know, again, guys, I understand a few of these bases uh, are still back from the, I think we're caught up to about April now. Some of these are from the end of March. So yes, we, we understand that. I just wanted to point that out. Um, however, uh, still some uh, very glaring issues with this base. Uh, you want to take us through them, Cad? Yeah, let's uh, start with the basics. Um, the first thing I see when I look at this base, all four giant bombs. I mean, uh, there's this one jump over there. Uh, that cripples your whole base, mm -hmm. and that being there, yeah, I, we don't really need to go any further um, about ground defending. That is another thing I w did want to mention is all of these three air defenses are really close together, and just um, the fact that two are in the same compartment. Yeah, that too, uh, and and the the worst part of it is that the third one is reachable from that one compartment. So, yep. for example, you could break her in here, uh, jump this because it's seven tiles, uh, maybe even earthquake it if you're not confident confident with it, and then uh, jump this and uh, basically loon it because, uh, well, it, everything will be opened up, every single air defense will be down by that time. Uh, it will need some extra planning. Uh, I mean, this air defense is a bit tricky, um, but then again, they're so close together, it's easy to abuse it and that makes this a uh, kind of a weak base yep for sure a um, couple little other notes too right the spring traps weren't really uh weren't no, we're fantastic now this is something that i learned with spring traps when i first did spring traps these ones here specifically you're gonna get probably one or two hogs no problem but mm -hmm. um yep. it's because there's not that one space in between the defense Right, you really want to be able to move that archer tower over and get that spring trap right in between, right? Yeah, and in this case, it's a bit better because a hawk come from this cannon towards the air defense and then walking over to the archer tower. So th this one spring might actually work pretty well, but imagine um, coming from the expo and down, they will completely evade it. Yeah. There's no way they're going to hop over. So this is what we mean with a, a one-way spring trap. This is an, a good example of it. Um, if they come from the bottom up, the spring trap will work. But from the other side down, it will never work. Yep. So I think uh, that should most of uh, cover this base. I mean, there's a, a double black bomb in the Archer Queen. That's a bit too much. For example, both sweepers are pointed down. Try to spread them out. Right now, I can come in... Um, from most, if not all, angles, and still, um, I mean, any hound from this angle, for example, will likely evade all of the sweepers or n not get affected by it, because uh, the things you want to defend with a sweeper are the balloons, not the lava hounds. Yes. So exactly. there, there's a couple of those things in here. Um, I would recommend go back to our uh, 
air defense and uh, giant bomb uh, um, videos. Watch those. Overall, you're you're getting close. Um, yeah, I, I'd say try uh, try again. Yeah, just <laughs> Sounds not a bit quite harsh, there. But I think uh, starting over is the best idea in this case. Both skelly traps in the queen chamber as well. Yeah, I just noticed. That's, uh, sure as well. <coughs> let's hop to the next one. Sounds good. Okay. So the next base. Um, this base has a bit of a similar issue. I mean, I think most people will see it by now. Um, there's one earthquake or even a jump could be placed here over the expo and town hall base uh, in that area. Uh, that connects all four giant bombs and the queen. Now, in this base, it's a bit harder because from any angle you come in from, um, you still need to invest a jump. Yes. Or somehow so, double wall break or yeah. something. Because Which is hard because... Uh, I think the only real viable option to double wall break would be from that area. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't do it. Um, then again, uh, what we've talked about before uh, starting this video is um, a golem in, in the center area. Let me mark it down. Like in, in this section, if you get two or three golems in that section, I think every single defense except for maybe one or two cannons will be pointed in. Yeah, pretty much. There's no better way for uh, Hawks to be surgically deployed than this. I was just going to say that. You just fall around like a pinwheel. A couple yeah. on each defense, and once the outer defenses go down... Two on each down, defense, and you're done. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, all of the spring traps don't even matter at that point, because um, all the Hawks need to do is take out the first defense, and then they're done. Yeah. That's all they need to do. So if you get three golems in the core, it's, it's game over. You yep. don't need heals anymore, you need nothing. So that's that's uh, the main reason why we're saying like your giant bombs need to be separated, and I think this explains it very well. And again, a huge, a huge, 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 huge piece of always why it it seems that a base just doesn't quite get there is the queen placement, right? I mean, she's just too centralized, yep. too close she's to everything. Jump over to almost every direction. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Another a couple points to you again. Spring traps, guys. Springs against walls. No bueno. I mean, this one over here. Yeah, there, there's... This one, too, is a one-way spring. I mean, a hawk is most likely coming from the north anyway. It will likely not even trigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some work to do. Again, I would revisit specifically the pathing in the queen chamber um, yep, episodes of the base building videos and, uh, and try again. Yeah, so good try once again. Um, yeah, it, Ooh, another... it, it has a bit too big of an issue with the base to be really viable. Like three air defenses, all kind of on the outside, all walkable. Oh, uh, you can walk this any day. Likely yeah. we will even engage. So you could, uh, I mean, this is something you want to show in a friendly challenge, to be honest. I mean, if I rage this with my queen and walk past, um, your queen will likely engage. And that's game over for the base. Two air defenses, the queen and the CC, with, with one rage healers. and four healers, basically, yeah. yeah. So, let's go to the next base. Yep, sounds good. So, this one is a lot better already. I think uh, the builder of this one uh, said something uh, about it. Yeah, talking about sort of this uh, open queen chamber concept. We've seen that a little bit here and there. I um, believe uh, one of our ex-members, Blindspot, kind of... Uh, pioneered that idea with base building um, and what are your thoughts about that um, yeah it's been an experiment um, we've talked about him with it and uh, the the idea is um, the current trends of um, queen chambers have been uh, to use a, as little walls as possible for the queen so the the last step in doing that would be to have no walls in front of your queen so we've experimented with it a bit, but um, there are some really big layering issues, which is a, a high-level king. I mean, this is a fully maxed out base, so I assume you're high up in the map. That means you're going to get attacked by max-level heroes. And a max-level hero, a max-level king, uh, with a little bit of tanking, will just take out this cannon, take out both heroes, and maybe some storages, but that's fine. At that point, your queen is dead. The king is dead, and one cannon is dead, and that leaves you to do whatever you want, right? Yep. So I could, for example, come in at the south here, break her in, uh, I mean at the, the mortar at uh, 4 o'clock, jump over the air defense over here, take out the, the defenses in this section, and that leaves me just a, a little section of the base. Not too much to be worried about, to be real. 
Um, so that's my main issue with uh, the concept. Uh, the concept has been interesting, but um, currently we're actually moving back a little bit towards having uh, less walkable queens. Yep, and I mean, even still, like, seven walls, I think this is. Seven walls across It's not there. too like, many. Like, what... The only thing that you're preventing is you're forcing some sort of wall. Like you're just forcing more troops to be used. At least, I mean, I for yeah, a seven. Yeah, for example, do you need the, all of these walls around your town hall? What do they really uh, protect? You could you could close this off, and then have this wall still, and then move it over. I mean, that together with, for example, these walls at the four o'clock section, I think you can actually close it off, and still be fine with it. Yep. Another thing I've been looking at as well with how powerful Valks have been is is kind of I, I imagine if Valks are deployed somewhere on my base, where do they go and why, right? And I'm hmm. looking at I'm looking at this open queen chamber. Um, they will be sucked in. Easy funnel on the army camp. You literally drop them right on this corner, and it's like a game of plinko, right? Just oh, straight in. straight yep, into straight. where you want them to go. Yeah. I, I know this base is uh, pre-Valkyrie uh, era. I mean, uh, it has the old air defenses, which is a, a dead giveaway. Yes. Um, but then again, I think the, all of the same principles still apply. The only thing is that it's ever more important to defend against Valkyries. Mm -hmm. So I think um, showing this base now, even though it's a lot later, is still very valuable. I mean, uh, for example, something I would not recommend anymore is uh, these touching buildings in the core, uh, the expo, storage, storage, and storage. Um, the idea of having storages in your base is to stall troops for as long as possible. If both storages go down at the same rate, then what's the added benefit of them? Yeah. Uh, one thing, actually, one of the guys uh, mentioned is do your best to... A, we'll separate them, right? Because then your Valkyries aren't killing two buildings at the same time. Um, but try and pair them up with, with something, you know, like like that. So, yeah, they're going to kill the one building first, but then have to singly target your storage in the core, right? And take forever to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and part of it, too, is is use this to your advantage. If you have those buildings touching, you want it to be for a reason. You want it to be luring Valks in that direction. So, for example, the one I just circled, you don't want Valks going that way. You want them Absolutely going down, no. No. away from the bomb. So, you know, you want to... A, a Valk attack is up. most likely supported with Hawks, and this is the one thing you need to defend in that case. So that's the second issue I had with this base, is uh, this one jump. I mean, it all stems from having an open queen. Um, because of uh, the queen, uh, because the queen is open, a golem will path in and then path up towards the uh, archer tower cannon and uh, so forth. Um, but the fun part is that the Valkyries will actually likely walk uh, between these st two storages and take out the DTP. Even yeah. though the the golem will be uh, will not go there, that's not an issue because it will still be tanking for all of the point defenses that really matter. Um, you still need to heal across the DTP over there. So, what's the added benefit? That's my question. Yeah. Um, so, with, <coughs> with its jump, um, even closing off this wall, that's the, uh, the big vulnerability of this base. I agree. So, I, I think something needs to change. So, either this wall has to move. Uh, I mean, I think these two walls are actually needed. I think that's the best solution. Yeah. Yeah, and you could quite easily pretty much do that by... Uh you know, freeing up that town hall a little bit. For example, yeah, there's yeah. a couple of uh, areas. I mean, you could even chip away like four walls at the three o'clock section. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's an idea for you. I mean, likely this base isn't any used anymore, but still, uh, the principles still count. So once again, this base as well, it has a lot of bad spring traps. Um, yeah, th this one, that one you, you marked down. Um, they need to be in between defense, and they have to be two ways. I think we mentioned this uh, previously in the in the video. Mm -hmm. um, any other things we just see with um, hawks and defending? Them? Uh, this DGB is pretty interesting, or DGB? It's a, it's a semi DGB. Yeah, we were but talking about that. I think it's worth uh, mentioning. Yeah, we've been talking about this. I think it, it it's a really interesting, this one is. Because from any angle you, you come from, they will most likely path over properly. 
Um, but there's only one angle in which they actually trigger the mole, which is track. really, really wonky, in my so opinion. So when I was well, after we talked about, it, I was thinking like if you just shifted it over, just one, so it just was in that section. I don't know. I think it would create a lot, a lot harder zone to to control because right now I could send in uh, two hogs from this point over there. I mean, the the I can drop them right in on this tile. Um, I think two hogs, maybe three, will be able to take it out and take out the uh, giant bomb. Yeah. So that's a value trade, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Three, four hogs, even four hogs. To save right? a, a heal, almost. Yeah. For a bomb, yeah. I think that's that could be worth it. it it's a close call. It, it depends on how you would actually uh, attack the base. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else we see? Uh, uh, Hogwise, not really. Um, I think we covered most. most sure. right. Well, the yep. one thing I do really like about this base is uh, the queen is over here. There's a DGB over there. Uh, single, single. It, it, I can just pretty much draw a line straight across the center, and you can see how spread they are. Yeah. I think that's a really good example of uh, a good spread of uh, bombs. Even though the, this one jump is an issue, I think the spread of bombs is really nice in this one. Absolutely. So, next, air defense. Air defense, yeah. Um, once again, a golem coming in here will likely get stuck in this area, but a queen might be able to take this out. It's it's tricky. I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't do it. So, I think the air defense is fine. Um, None the defense cannot are walkable. Be blocked, no. So, that's nice. Nice this spread on them. Tricky, it might be I was just small, looking at sure. that, yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's not possible, but it's a close call. I, th I think she, uh, the queen will not walk in that far. No, especially down specifically this, uh, because of this army camps, because you're going to have to yeah. start her so far back, right? Yeah. Um, you know, one thing we talked about, too, is just this section has all of the high hit point stuff. The high hit points. So a queen charge from any angle into the base is very uh, valuable. Yep. For sure. Um, so I, I know that there's a small bomb here, but that can be worked around. Um, if you manage to break open this section, and that's why this uh, that small bomb is really well placed. Um, a, a queen coming in here, uh, funnel this, funnel this, funnel this, funnel this. Um, she can walk in and basically clear, well, this whole section of the base, given yep. enough time. Yep. So that, that's a bit of an issue. Um, I can see someone uh, dropping a, a couple of hogs in this section to take out these uh, three defenses. And so she moves up more quickly. I think that could be worth it as well. And then with the Suicide King, that makes uh, the base pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting idea, actually. <clears throat> You'd have to work around the small bomb. I mean, it's yeah, a the only thing I don't breaker, like is but... that most of the valuable uh, defenses are in this section. Yes. So I think it's a bait, but still. <laughs> yeah. Overall, though, like I, I, I like the concept, and again, like it's an older, older concept. Um, you know, we are catching up slowly here, guys, but um, there's just too much meat, just too much right there. I mean, I, I understand yeah, that, what that's you're doing. Twenty to thirty percent of the base with but to, all of the storages except for one. To a golem, a king, and Valks that that it's especially to Valks like that's just value. They you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So overall, I, I, I think we need to commend you for building a good base. I mean, the air defenses are well spread out. Um, the red bombs are in pretty tricky locations, for what I can tell. This one doesn't do much over here at the Queen. Um, this one is pretty nice. So so the, the red bombs are in good positions. The sweepers are placed to, just, uh, to counter balloons more than anything. I like that. Um, this one might be a uh, might be a good one to point uh, like this. Oh, See yeah. what I mean? Because it, it will counter the queen coming in, and um, yeah, even yeah, show it, it, the even added value it. of pointing it this way it just isn't there. Yeah. Um, the black mines are very spread out. Uh, that's pretty good. I think. Uh, this one, getting that one popped quickly is actually really nice because of the, all of the Teslas are around there. The one thing I did want to mention is uh, the Wizard Towers. This one is in range of that air defense. This one is in range. And that one is in range. So 
you're not that strong uh, when defending air attacks. Then again, it's tricky to get to an air defense and the queen, but keep that in mind. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that covers it. Yeah, overall, good job. Um, yeah, I think a couple of the couple of the most glaring issues, obviously, are, are just these springs. <laughs> like the, that's the biggest issue I see. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And spread out the the storages. Yeah, I think if you if you spread out the storages, it's basically going to be a lot harder to triple. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, beautiful. Good job, man. Absolutely perfect. Last one. Last but not least. So this is a, an interesting base. I like it. At first glance. Uh, let's start at the start. Uh, the queen. One big issue I see still with this base is the queen is going to jump. Two spaces, yeah. And where is she going to jump into? The double giant bombs. The double giant bombs. This is a no-go. Uh, to me, this is a no-brainer no-go because... Um, this allows me to to come in from this angle, jump here, or even just break her in. I mean, why not? I mean, bring a, a shattered entry, break her in here, and then jump over there. Yep. I mean, why not? That's really good value. A lot of That's Teslas, two bombs. Yep. Yeah, that, that leaves you with this section of the base, basically. So uh, you need, still need to plan for the top section. Uh, it's rough. Yep, and now granted... It is nice that this is offset from all of that because um, you do have... That's you, a well-placed uh, double set. Yeah, because yes. you will have to have a plan for that. Like, you can't... You know, Absolutely. I mean, it is a little... Once you figure it out, it's a little underprotected on that side. I think so. But then again, this Tesla does make up for a lot. Yeah, I it's going to yank spring, a lot. Uh, from, when coming from this angle, uh, the Hawks will likely path back. That's, uh, that's that an issue tower. I see. Yeah. So if you do a one finger drop on this mortar, I think they they will actually path back over, and never touch the DGB. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Yep. That's there's, crazy. There'll be three on the one side and then two. I don't two from think the anyone side. will ever do that though. No. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so crazy. I mean, uh, I would advise against it to be fair. Mm -hmm. But it's possible. It's possible. Um. Yeah, so the spread is pretty nice. But imagine um, having a giant bomb over there and having a, a single over here or over here, for example. The the spread would be so much better, making it that much harder to triple. Mm -hmm. um, so about the queen herself, if she's moved up one spot, I think uh, that would protect her a lot better. Uh, there's quite some storages around her still. So that could be uh, an issue that can be fixed. I do like how they're mostly out of, you know, they're, they're not inside her chamber, which is always a, a, a cardinal rule. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just this a few too many. Well. well, actually, that's not bad because you, you have two no, and it's four. No, not bad. And then two over here on the corners. Actually, I kind of like that. I like the, the spread. The one thing on. I don't like is I see a spring trap and a red bomb and a skeleton trap in there. Yes. So I think all three of those are kind of wasted. Yeah, especially because, I mean, well, you, you might pull up the CC a different way, but you know that poison's going down over yeah, both I mean, those heroes. And the CC. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing um, is good to mention with this space because it's a really clear example of something I tried to mention last video. Uh, if you have a golem coming in at this mortar, break it open, this thing is gone, so the mortar moves towards the air defense, and then towards the Tesla. This is a prime example of where the queen would jump further than three spaces. Yeah, she'll start chasing that golem. Yeah, she will. So I'm re I think you need to place her four tiles away in this case. Same goes for, from the top down. If you yeah. have a golem walking down like this, she will likely even jump, even though this is three spaces. Yeah. So, a big warning uh, there. Uh, I think you're best off even removing these walls. I, I say this a lot. It's it's um, it opens you up to so many more attacks. But at the same time, uh, if you if you have your queen over here, have her not jump in these directions. I think that makes your base a lot stronger. Yeah, and you have the space to do it, right? Like with that so, really yeah. good moat you have in front of that queen, you can push her right, right up in there, like right there. And she's still, yeah, she'll jump into the moat, but that's not a big deal. 
right? That's less of a deal than it That's is less for her, deal than jumping for her to jump speed. backwards. Absolutely. Yeah. Good point. I like uh, the placing of the black mines, even though uh, this one might be a bit tricky. I mean, there's so many storages in front of there. I don't think anyone would ever try it. Um, if you're going to use a, a black mine, I think uh, in this area would be better because uh, I don't. I don't think anyone will ever dragon swap this still. No, and I mean everyone. It, it's it's a dying thing. If it's they, dead, if they were, then you have to drop a, a dragon here, uh, a dragon there, then a third dragon on the the gold sword, so they move in like this, and then the queen will aggro and pull them in. I guess the way I would put it is. If you have a very shallow queen chamber, you might worry about a dragon swap, but you don't have a shallow queen chamber. You have no, a very a deep, invested queen chamber. Yep. For someone to try and break down how they're going to funnel drags through all those that's storages. That's 60 drags and a rage. Right? I mean, 60 troop space. Sorry, not 60 dragons. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty that's sweet. 60 troop space and a rage. I think um, no one will try it. Yeah, absolutely. So I'd kick that black mine probably, uh, double, double it up out there, something yep. like that. And then again, um, the wall breaker AI right now, I, I'm just going to move on. Um, there's no reason for wall breakers to target this wall. So I'm fairly sure that if you drop a wall breaker right there, it will walk in and go towards the mortar. Yeah, I, I agree. Or if you drop it a little lower, maybe it's going to go to that whiz tower maybe. But. Yeah, but maybe, maybe you want to drop it like in front of this army camp. I think it will walk in and... Uh, in, be in range of the wizard tower, so that's kind of tricky. But I think you can work around it and open uh, open it all up. Um, and uh, getting a queen in there, that's the reason why I said it. Even a queen from 12 o'clock. I think a queen from 12 o'clock has a lot of value. Yep. Because if you can funnel her in right here, um, she would take out that air defense. She would even walk around and take out this air defense with the double giant bomb. She take out a lot of defenses, so a rage is in place. But I think it's doable with one uh, rage and maybe an ability. There's only the town hall and elixir storage that would be in her range to get kind of caught up. Yeah. And with the new expos, um, there's uh, yeah, there's no expos pointing at her. I think um, if you had an expo over here, for example, or even moved further away, so she can't actually target it. Um, I think it would be a lot harder to pull off. Uh, anything else? Da, 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 da. Uh, I no. think most people would expect a DGP in the core or over there, not next to the queen. I think yeah, most would the really try there. hard to, to place this jump and come in somehow that they could place that jump and then jump towards the queen. Yeah. Hmm, so that then, might be a nice bait. And that would that would be tricky to pull off at the same token as well. It would be, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think overall, good job. I, I just feel, I think if you split that DGB by the queen up into a couple singles, it would make your base, this base, a lot stronger. A lot stronger. Yeah. 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 For example, this spring trap over here doesn't do, uh, doesn't really do anything. Nope. Especially when the base is revealed. If the base is revealed, uh, people are going to come in with this jump or breaker in. So that spring trap is uh, kind of useless. Uh, then again, wizard towers and air defenses. This one is in range. This one uh, targets. This one targets both. Uh, this one is out of range. So th th this one at the bottom, that's the one good uh, wizard tower, I think. Mm -hmm. Teslas are all in range of air defenses as well, as far as I could tell, except for uh, this one. So that's really tricky. Sort of um, outside the base troll one. Yep. Um, Something might point this out. This is a one right? for one trade, I think. I think that's a one for one trade. This is a one for one trade. This wizard tower might be a one for one loon trade. At least two for one. Um, yeah, there's a red bomb there. I'm not sure, but yeah, there, there's at least two one for one uh, balloon trades in the base. Yeah, like even the Tesla is pretty uh, it's, exposed. That one's that, tricky because the air defense might uh, be in range. It pops up. The wizard tower is targeting. I'm not sure. Top um, if it's it, it, if need be, you can do it. You can drop a loon straight on top of it, and it might actually take it out. I mean, just, you just need one drop anyway. Mm -hmm. It might be possible. I don't know. Um, I think it's actually possible if you pre-trigger it with a barbarian. <laughs> yeah. I think that, that's... it'll already be up. Go. You drop it right on top. It's going to get a hit off. 
Yeah, it is. So, um, um, anything else? Most of the spring traps, other than that one, are pretty good. Are though. good. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, absolutely. I really like this little hidden one there. Yeah, on that's the a sweet one. That's it's very sweet. difficult. I always try and get a spring trap in with the Tesla, and it's it's difficult to do it without creating a hole. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, you can do it with uh, storages, though, for example. Uh, storages really uh, are a big help in that re regard. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, the last comment I would make on this base is that um, when fresh hitting this base, that's what I pointed out earlier, is there's only two viable spots for a DGB, and because of all of the open spaces, you would expect something there. So... If I were to fresh hit this base, I would expect a giant bomb up top. Um, would expect something in one of these compartments, like uh, a DGB there, and some shenanigans uh, somewhere else. See, even a fresh hit, if you're looking at it, I'd be uh, because of because of that what you just mentioned, and the fact that you can get a clean jump over that, and then you know a double oh, jump, yeah, that's double a really jump, nice one. Yeah, double jump, cool. something like that. Um, yeah. I, I, that's I, actually the best way to go. Because you're going to go. Just that I like queen charges that much that I actually would add a queen charge in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's true. I, I think I would queen charge this from the top and then do that double double jump you just talked about. Another thing too. Yeah. I have been talking to people about is whenever there's, it, it doesn't necessarily always dictate where you're going to enter the base from, but a lot of times, like, look how easy it is to funnel. On, on that it's side of the easy. base. Yeah. Right? So I think and you're going to... overkill on buildings on this side. Yeah. Now I, touching. Um, it, it's, the reason I say that is because when you give away free funnels like that, more often than not, guys are going to look how they can go in from that side. So the fact that it's in common... Like, it's in yeah. combination with this jump that goes right to the core that's going to let everything in cleanly and then you can kind of pick and choose where you want to go. Obviously, you probably want to go with that queen. I mean, you're going to get big value going through there. Yeah, that's most of the base, really. And then even while your kill squad's going in, that's the point where you drop four hogs from three o'clock, right? And take the CGB out And if you, you get want to. the other yeah. one too at the same time, yeah. yeah. That's a very valid point. And then again, I mean, you can drop two hogs here, two hogs here, just surgical all around the base uh, to support them. Yeah. Just sandwich would, everything you in. Need you, you, you would still need a spell in this area, uh, either with queen charge or with the hogs. But uh, you, you've got one spell left, so uh, it's doable. Yeah. It's a good base overall, though. Uh, one thing about funneling, I don't think we've mentioned this too much. Um you want your troops, to, uh, the enemy troops, to not be able to get in easily. So, if this is the most likely entry path, um, you want these buildings to be the strongest because those are still within vision range of most troops. Um, even if, especially if there's more buildings over there, like like the circles I just drew. Um, troops are very likely to go there, and even though they're very far away, so you're forcing by making those sometimes even storages. I wouldn't recommend storages, but it's an idea. Um, if you have a storage uh, in those circles, people would really rethink entering there because they would have to invest double wizards at least just for the funnel. Yep. Or even if it's minions, right? Like you give a free minion funnel on a storage. Well, that guy's got to wait for like 30 seconds before <laughs> that building goes down, right? And how many, you tell me, how many times in the last few weeks have you seen 2.0 guys and run all guys <laughs> run, you know, I can't count the amount yep. of 95 plus percents we've seen because the time is just insane. insane. And, yeah. So that extra 10 seconds can mean the difference. It can make the difference, absolutely. And that's also the reason why I'm saying like those 10 seconds, uh, it's it's in the details. Because if uh, an entry from this angle, if this was a storage and it was moved to the side, so Valkyries would have to kill them one at a time. If that's a storage, that, that's a few seconds at the start. Yeah, you, do, you add Not those up. That, uh, it adds up because of the income and damage. Yep. So that, that one second or two seconds, uh, well, in this case, even if it's a storage, even three or four, that becomes 10 to 15 seconds. Yep. Snowball that through the whole base, it might become a fill. Yep. Um, 
so I think again, like we said, overall uh, we like this base when we were looking at it. Um, <laughs> obviously, when you break it down, you break it down, and it's <laughs> it's gonna happen when you see all the traps and everything, right? But it is. But then again, any base can be tripled. For sure. There, no there's no tunnel nine that cannot be tripled by another tunnel nine. So, you know, it's a good base. I think it will hold. I think it will uh, do pretty well against uh, almost every uh, clan out there. Yep. So, uh, great job, man. To me, I think quick, easy fixes for this base. And again, guys, I know we're behind and these are old bases you're sending us, but I think it's very valuable to see what the old style base building was and comparing it to updated Clash of Clans today and seeing seeing where the differences are and where the, where these adjustments that we as a base building team have made as the game evolves, right? So um, main issues, I would think, is is take some of this stuff out of here and just move it around to the other side yeah. of your base. Um, maybe make that into two singles instead and fix that god-awful spring trap. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's uh, the biggest thing. Yeah, I agree. Nice base, though. All right, so uh, you want to uh, call it a day here? I think that's a good one. And uh, are we going to do a, an updated video on the, the, what do you call it, the new update for Clash of Clans? Yeah, um, yeah we'll, uh, we'll talk more this weekend. Uh, I really, maybe we should just wait until it drops so we can see firsthand everything that is official. I know we get our I Twitter think, updates yeah, and stuff. Idea. So I, I heard Monday, is that... That's the most likely because of the patterns uh, Supercell has been releasing patches. Okay, so and obviously we got our uh, family scrim going on right now, so that is awesome. I love that. 50 versus 50, you know, 2.0 and Victa and Swarm. I don't even know if no, Venom's not included, are they? I don't know. Fuck. No, um, they're not included, actually. There's a couple but, of them in there, but they're promoted. Yes, uh, so that's that's going on right now. So I'm gonna do a nice big recap for that. I've been a little bit behind on my videos as is. Um, yeah, just real life gets in the way. You know how that is. <laughs> so, uh, but we will have a lot of awesome content coming. We are really excited for this update video. It's gonna it's it'll drop Monday. So uh, I know Kat and I were talking about how we both have Tuesday available to uh, get, put something together at least, and uh, maybe uh, have a more solid plan once we actually see it. Um, for how our future Slay My Base videos are going to go, or at least the format. You know, we talked about even having maybe guest stars come in and, and discuss some things with us and having them have a crack at the base uh, so you guys can watch them try and uh, try and hit it live. Obviously, you're going to know it's going to be like a cleanup attack because they're going to know where things are. I mean, I don't know how we would avoid that, but... Um, We'll see. I mean, yeah. the, we've got we've got uh, the coming months to do this and perfect it. I mean, I'm really excited. Yeah, absolutely. So, a lot of good content coming your way, guys. Uh, I think I'm gonna uh, head out now, though. I gotta go get ready for work. Unfortunately, good old Saturday night at the restaurant. Um, but uh, unless you had anything else to add, Cad? No, man. Beautiful. Well, thanks for coming out. You're Always welcome. a pleasure. Uh, but uh, that'll do it here for your wisdom from Wiser and Caddick. <laughs> so trying to help you guys bag that next tree star. Till then, we're out.